Welcome to year one. A very warm welcome to all of you, and we hope you are as excited as we are for the next academic year ahead. My name is Sarah Hollingworth, and I'm the assistant principal for the foundation stage. And next year, I'm very excited to announce to you that I will also be overseeing year one. On this Zoom this afternoon, I am joined by Tom Jackson, who will be our head of year. To help you prepare and know a little bit more about year one, we have put together some information about what to expect for your child's learning journey for the up and coming academic year. This session will be recorded. Therefore, please can I ask you to turn off your cameras and also mute your microphone. Thank you. We welcome any questions that you may have and please could I ask that you use the chat function at the end of the session. Therefore, we will give a time allocated at the end of the session to answer any questions that you may have, but hopefully we'll cover the majority of the questions as we move through the slides. I'm now going to hand over to Tom Jackson, who's our head of year one for the next academic year. And he's going to talk to you about curriculum and learning within year one. Okay, hi everyone. Thank you for your time this afternoon. Um, like Sarah said, I'm uh, Tom Jackson and I'm going to be head of year one next year. Now, we've got a fantastic team in year one of teachers and teaching assistants and everyone's really looking forward to meeting the children and yourselves in September. So just a little bit for today, we just want to make sure you know a little bit of what life's going to be like in year one and what you can expect in September. So the aims of the session today, we will be going through uh, the curriculum in year one and how your children will be learning. We'll have a look at the day in the life of a year one student. We'll also look at how you can help your child prepare for year one, what your child will need in September. Uh, we'll mention a few future parent engagements and we'll also have a look at some frequently asked questions. Um, and by the end of the session, hopefully uh, everyone is ready for September and you know a little bit more about year one. Okay, so first of all, we'll be looking a little bit at the curriculum and like I said, how your child will learn in year one. Um, at the beginning of year one, it looked very similar to FS2. Your children will learn through hands-on practical approaches. They'll continue to develop their physical, social, emotional, and communication and language skills. Um, so there'll be no drastic changes. There's nothing for you or your children to worry about. And as always, the focus um, will be the ch children's well-being and just helping them settle into year one. Once we've done that, um, we'll be moving a little bit more this year to an integrated curriculum approach. Now, year one have adopted that this year and also many other year groups at WSO. And as uh, in the past, traditionally, year one children have explored their topics through individual subject specific lessons. Um, this year, as you can see with uh, the diagram, that we are moving towards the integrated approach and all of our topics will lead the learning. So as you can see, all the subjects go into our topic and we uh, learn through experiences. Now, the benefits of adopting this approach is that it allows us to create learning experiences that are uninterrupted. Um, it's really linked to the real world and it gives all our students sort of 21st century skills um, that they can learn and they can uh, apply to real life situations. Okay, so an example of that in this term, actually in term three, the children year one have been looking at their topic back to the future and the children were able to apply their knowledge of geography, history, art, design and technology, and even some computing to deepen their understanding of how things have changed over time. It also gives us the opportunity for us to develop English skills and math skills throughout all of the subjects, not just specifically for those lessons. Uh, so that's just a little bit of reasoning why we've moved towards this approach. And as you can see from the images, the children are learning in really creative, fun ways, um, and they'll be able to use their knowledge and their learning into real life situations. 
Okay, so your child's class teacher will be teaching all of the core subjects in year one. They'll teach English, math, science, and well-being. They will also teach some of the foundation subjects such as art, design and technology, geography, history, and computing. And then some other foundation subjects will be taught by specialist teachers. Um, and if we go on to the next slide, I'll just be able to uh, talk you through which what lessons they are. So subject specialist teachers will uh, teach PE, they'll teach performing arts, they'll teach outdoor learning, also modern foreign languages, Islamic and mm -hmm. Arabic. So Arabic A children, that which are native speakers, will go to their Arabic A classes and Arabic B who are non-native speakers will be in their Arabic class. So if your child uh, speaks Arabic at home, but does not have an Arabic passport, we do offer the children the opportunity to be part of Arabic A lessons, but they must do an assessment first um, to see that they are able to access that curriculum. Okay, a little bit of uh, about the assessment. So at WSO, as you know, we are consistently assessing the children's uh, work and seeing where they are. We do this to ensure that lessons are personalized and all the children are making good progress. So very similar to FS2, we observe and we record the learning that takes place in class and we track all children individually as a class and as a year group. So in year one, we use a program called Classroom Monitor and it's used to record and evaluate the assessment data. Now, at the end of each term with the reports, as parents, you will get the assessment summaries. Um, and this will just show you the objectives that have been taught that term, where your child is at, have they met those objectives, are they working towards them? Has your child's class teacher set any targets? And also there might be areas that your child's exceeding in. So this really helps you um, know where your child is at each term and helps you follow their learning journey. Okay, I'll pass you back over now to uh, Miss Hollingworth. Thank you, Tom. I was just making sure that I was off mute there, unmuted. I did made the mistake of staying on mute. So I'm just going to talk you through a day in the life of a year one student. And I'd like to take this opportunity to reassure you that it's not too different from FS2. So in year one and throughout Key Stage 1, we begin our day at 7.30. We start with a soft start until 7.40 and the day will finish at 2 p.m. That's a little bit later than FS2, only 30 minutes, so it's not too much of a big jump. Children will have two break times, snack and lunch time, just like in FS2, and will continue to play in the jungle, desert and the oasis. Children will need to bring a healthy packed lunch as we do not visit the canteen in Key Stage 1. So snack times and play times is exactly the same in FS2. But what I want to share with you this afternoon is that we are going to be having an investment in the jungle area and changing the design. So it looks a little bit more like our outdoor learning area, which it will be so exciting for the children to get the opportunity to explore the space and develop their learning in a space outside of the classroom on a daily basis. As I previously mentioned, the school day finishes at two o'clock and we are able to offer an extended day school programme, which is free of charge. And this is called Little Falcons and children are able to stay until 2.50 and 3.20 for students in year one. However, spaces will be limited and more information of how to sign up for Little Falcons will be shared when we join in September. So it's a big next step, um, the children going up into year one. They're also physically moving upstairs as well. So it's a really, really exciting time. But it's normal to feel a little bit nervous about this transition, as year one is of, uh, often associated with more formal learning. I'm feeling really lucky that I'm able to take the FS2 children up on 
in on their journey into year one with them. And it's been so nice to see as parents have entered the waiting room and have entered the Zoom session, so many, many familiar names. So I'm really looking forward to supporting students and teachers with this transition. We want the students to feel supported. Therefore, we will be having a transition week, the week beginning the 27th of June. There'll be an opportunity for your child to meet the year one teachers. We're also organizing treasure hunts, caterpillar hunts um, along the year one corridor, really getting the children used to the space and the new environment. Our Grow Well team are preparing lessons to support, support students with this transition. And we'll also be using social stories to explain the differences as they move into year one. These stories explain real life situations to really help the children understand the transition. Our current class teachers in FS2 will complete a handover with your child's new class teacher in preparation for September. And your child will have, and we will share with you a welcome video from your child's new class teacher on Thursday, the 1st of July. So we're going to be sharing this information with families so you can share this video with your child over the summer so they're really familiar with their new class teacher ready for September. So how can you help your child prepare for year one? The social story that we use in school will also be sent home. So you can use this story to read to your child and support them with their transition in September. Now, obviously, we will do so much work with them in between now and the end of the academic year. But we know that the summer is a long break um, away from school. So it will be important in that couple of weeks in the lead up to coming back to school that you have these open conversation with your child about the changes that they will see in year one. There's some discussion prompts there that you might ask your child um, to support them with their understanding. So how is it like the FS2 classroom? How is it different? What are you looking forward to? And how are you feeling about your new class? Role play as well at home is really important. Often children at a young age will reflect their thoughts and feelings through play. Acting out school, building schools with construction or reading stories about school will often help children share their thoughts and feelings about coming back to school. And a big thing for our youngest children as they transition into year one is their independence. Our FS2 team have worked so hard this academic year to ensure that children have developed the skills of independence. So over the summer, it's important as parents that you continue to practice these skills. So getting dressed, dressed and changed in and out of their clothes and uniform independently, going to the toilet and washing their hands and packing away. It could be their toys or things that they need if you're going for a day out, making sure that they're packing up things independently and becoming responsible of their belongings. So working on their independence will be really important that you continue to do this over the summer break. So what will your child need uh, for year one? Um, just like in FS2, they'll have their school uniform, they'll have their PE kit, which they will wear on PE days, they'll have their outdoor learning kit that they will um, have on their outdoor learning days. But what's new for year one is that we would like children in year one to bring their own iPad in. And this is part of your bring your own iPad device into school from year one to six. And also we will ask students to have their own pencil case. And there's a list of items there that they will need to have in their pencil case. And we'll share all of this information with you before we go on the break for the summer so you can have it prepared ready for September. We really want children to, um, children, my apologies, parents to feel so supported throughout the academic year. And we really value parent voice and making sure that the connection between teachers and parents is strong throughout the year. Meet the parent and teacher will happen at the beginning of September, but always we have an open door policy at WSO. For our year one students, just like in FS2, parents are able to drop off in the morning at the classroom and pick up in the afternoon. Therefore, it gives you the opportunity to speak to your child's class teacher. 
Now, we know this year that has looked very different because of COVID and we've had to limit the amount or length of conversations that we have on the door. But teachers do have an open door policy that you can arrange meetings, time to come in to meet face to face, socially distanced or over Zoom. You always have access to messaging them on Seesaw or emails as well. We'll have our termly workshops that are led by the school staff to ensure that parents have a full understanding of the children's curriculum. Therefore, this could be a maths parent engagement and hopefully we'll start to look at introducing them back into the school day where parents can be on site, seeing the children's learning in the classroom and learning with them. Whereas this year they have been on Zoom. So we're looking at maybe having a mix of that. But we really want our parents to be involved in the classroom and their students learning throughout the year. As well as this, just like in FS2, we will have our termly reports and meetings. So the more formal meetings for you to meet to discuss progress and attainment of your child within year one. Before the Zoom, um, a few parents had submitted frequently asked questions. So I'm just going to go through these now, but then we will open up the chat function where we'll be able to answer more of your questions. The first question is about extracurricular activities. This information will be shared with you at the start of the academic year and all children will continue with weekly enrichment lessons. What will they learn in all subjects? So at the start of every term, a curriculum overview will be shared with you detailing all of this information. As Mr. Jackson, um, Mr. Tom Jackson explained um, at the beginning of the Zoom session that we have this integrated learning approach, which is a creative, fun curriculum through different topics and themes. And we're really looking at ways of engaging the children with their learning. Just like in FS2, we have a child led learning approach. We want children to lead their own learning, have their own ideas and interests within the curriculum. We really will be adapting this as we move children into year one. Will there be homework? Each week, your child's class teacher will send phonics home learning, just like in FS2. And children will also have the opportunity to choose from an optional home learning menu each term to build on their exper experiences in school. Will the children be mixed classes for year one? Yes, we will be mixing the classes from FS2 into year, year one. And we have done this every year and we find this to be very beneficial for our students. Your child will stay in the same house and friendships will be taken into consideration. And please reach out to your child's current class teacher or myself if you have any questions or concerns over the next couple of weeks about the transition and class allocation for next year. We are here to support your child and you as parents through this transition. Question five is, will there be an option for remote learning? We have yet to receive the official guidance from the KHDA. However, it is very likely that we will provide remote learning provision for the next academic year. In FS2, we have reviewed our remote learning provision on a termly basis, and we will also be doing this as we enter year one to ensure that we have the correct provision in place for the students who are opting for remote learning. However, the official guidance has not been announced yet. This question is linked to what the children need to bring to school, and it is a question that parents have asked about them needing their own iPad or device. So children will need their own personal iPad in year one. And this is in line with our bring your own iPad scheme from years one to six. The iPad use will be integrated into our creative curriculum and children will use their iPad to enhance their learning experiences. Now we know in FS1 and FS2 that they do not have their own iPad and this will be a change for students. We really want the use of the iPad to be creative and to enhance learning experiences. So how we use the iPad throughout the academic year will change. In term one, we will really be focusing on a play-based approach. Therefore, there may be limited iPad use. But as we move through the year and as the curriculum changes and progresses, we will start to enhance in introduce those skills that are needed um, to access resources digitally and create and be creative and collaborative using technology. 
is the learning more formal in year one and are the children learning in books in year one? It is a big jump up into year one, but please be reassured that our teachers will continue to provide a fun and engaging curriculum and children will continue to have the opportunity to develop academically through a play-based creative approach. During term one, teachers will adapt their teaching to reflect the early years curriculum and gradually build on this throughout the year by introducing more formal lessons. Children will have the opportunity to record their learning in books, but there'll be lots of hands-on activities for the children to be learning. Therefore, we want to see children, hopefully, um, if restrictions are lifted slightly and safely, that we see children interacting with each other in a play-based environment within a year one classroom. Thank you for listening to both uh, Mr. Jackson and myself this afternoon. And um, it's been a pleasure to see you on the Zoom. Please use the chat function to ask any questions that you may have. And I'll open that up now and answer the questions as they come in. Just going to go back to here. So I'm just seeing the questions come in now. Just bear me one second. What type of iPad and device is a question? It is an iPad that they will need. I will send out more information about the specific iPad. Mr. McCauley is our digital coordinator at the school and he will be able to um, share this information. A question is about masks for year one. Now, the KHDA guidance is that students six years and above, it's mandatory for, wear, for them to wear a mask. However, this guidance may change over the summer and we will update all parents to make sure that they are fully informed of any COVID regulations and guidelines before they start in September. Will you share resources for the children over the summer for the next term? We will be sharing um, resources for the students and activities for them to complete. Um, last year, we had sent out summer sways with activities. Therefore, we will be replicating and improving a platform like this. So there will be activities for children to complete over the summer in preparation um, for year one and also to help them consolidate their learning in FS2. Um, somebody's asked a question, will the kids be using the iPad throughout the day or just specific subjects or timing? The iPad will definitely not be used throughout the day. It will be for specific subjects or timings. Um, as I've said, it will be play-based um, creative approach curriculum. Therefore, the iPad use will just be when it's beneficial to the students learning that may be using book creator to create a story. It might be looking at an animation and doing a lesson about animation. This is when we would introduce the use of the iPads. Um, will the kids use integrated learning? They didn't use it this year. So integrated learning in FS2, we very much have an integrated learning approach. So through our seven areas of learning, we integrate our curriculum in FS2. So it's something that our children are used to rather than having specific subjects taught throughout the week. So in year one, they will be adopting the integrated curriculum and carrying that on. They've already started it this year and it's been a great success going with the children's interests and and their learning and we will be sharing more information about this in September and we'll be having our parent workshops as well to make sure that you're fully informed. At the end of year one will children have the phonics screening test like in the UK? Yes the children will have a phonics screening test just like they have in the UK and we will also be assessing the children on their phonics knowledge on a termly basis and we will have the phonics screening test at the end of the academic year for year one. Let me just scroll through as the questions come through. 
Will swimming classes start in year one? Yes, we hope that swimming classes will start. We should have had them in FS1 and FS2. Unfortunately, we've not been able to have the swimming lessons this year because of COVID, but we're really hoping um, that the restrictions are eased um, safely in September and we can start the swimming lessons again. Will the students be able to choose their close friends to be in their year one classroom? Yes, over the next couple of weeks, our FS2 teachers will be speaking with the children about friendships. But if you do have any concerns about friendship choices or the transition, please do reach out to your child's class teacher. Um, somebody has asked a question about Little Falcons. So Little Falcons is our extended day school program. It's to support families. Originally, we had only had this for our siblings um, in the school, but we now open this for any child. So they're able to extend their day from till 2.50 or 320 and this is to support families the sign up to little falcons and will all this information will be shared in september prior to the student starting i'm just going to keep scrolling through will children be learning other languages and um, yes so we will have arabic within the curriculum but also they will learn french so they will have a 30 minute french lesson on a weekly basis taught by one of our modern foreign languages teachers let me just keep scrolling through the uh, the students will be meeting their year one teacher on the 1st of July. So before the end of the academic year, the, the children will be able to meet their um, year one teacher and they will also, um, and also this information will be shared with parents. So you will have the video as well, welcome video for you to share with your child at home. I'm just going to scroll back through. I can see that a few questions have come through about the iPad use. So what I will do, I will collate all of these questions and share with our current FS2 parents and new families that are joining for the next academic year. So you have all of the information with regards to the use of iPads and how we will use them within the classrooms. I think, sorry, just to reiterate that, that just to make it clear, the children really won't be sat there on iPads all day. Um, it will only ever be used if it improves the learning. So if they need to, you know, look something up or they can collaborate a little bit together. And again, it's a little bit of practice ready for them to be moving on from school. But please be assured that they will definitely not uh, just be sat on, on iPads through the day. It'll be very closely monitored. Somebody's asked about um, final assessments for the students. So yeah, assessments are shared on a termly basis and at the academic year. So you will have um, this shared um, with you. What will the history, science and geography curriculum look like? This is all integrated within our curriculum and all of this information will be shared with you at the start of each term. So you will have an update of the curriculum and the areas of learning and topics that children will be studying and objectives that they will be achieving throughout the term. Excellent. I think I've covered everything there. If there's something I've missed, please do reach out to myself or your child's class teacher um, and you will be able um, to have the information what has been recorded today shared with you so you're able to watch this again we'll also share the slides and I will get an update on the 